Hi, my name's Wade Stiller. I'm a naturopath here in Queensland, Australia, and we're going to be doing a series of vignettes on molecular hydrogen, because this is the molecular hydrogen revolution. Hello again, Internet. We're speaking again with Dr. Eleanor Thomas. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, we're talking today about inflammation. Now, Dr. Ellen, mm. we all know that when we uh, sprain an ankle or bump into a wall, mm -hmm. uh, we get some swelling and that's inflammation. Yep. Uh, now, is that the kind of inflammation that we're talking about when we talk about uh, molecular hydrogen helping out or, or acting as an anti-inflammatory agent? Yes. Um, there's lots of different types of inflammation. Oh. And the... Inflammation you were talking about yes. is what we call acute inflammation. So when there is a very short, quick event that the body requires um, to be healed, either you've done an injury or you've got an infection, then what happens is the immune system activates and it sends via chemical messengers a signal to the immune system saying send a whole lot of uh, immune healing cells to this area to clean up the mess or fight the infection and that releases um, uh, a lot of free radicals, that releases a lot of oxidative stress um, and there's a healing process that, that occurs with that. So what happens in that scenario is that's very beneficial for the body and then normally whatever was wrong with the body becomes healed and then all the inflammation calms down. The problem occurs if the inflammation isn't contained and then that inflammation is allowed to go on and on and on and then we term that chronic inflammation or more long-term inflammation. Okay. And that's related to all of the chronic long-term illnesses that we see in chronic health. Mm -hmm. So chronic inflammation is linked to dermatitis, it's linked to irritable bowel syndrome, um, chronic fatigue, um, all inflammatory bowel conditions, things like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's, wow. um, linked to cancer, linked to heart disease and stroke. So we know a lot of these diseases are because that inflammation has just gone on and on and on, unchecked for you know, months or up to years. Wow. So what we find with the, this inflammation is the body is trying to heal itself, but in part of that healing process and in part of the way the immune system heals the body, it releases a lot of these free radicals and oxidative stress. So a lot of it is in the energy that's required to be produced by the immune system yes. um, and also in the, the fact we're producing free radicals to kill the infection, you know, to mop up a lot of the damaged tissues that have occurred. So that's fine if that's contained and then the body can neutralise that damage. Yes. But normally what happens is there's so much tissue damage, that tissue damage itself creates more inflammation and you're into a very nasty, vicious cycle. Mm. So what we find with molecular hydrogen is that because it's such a powerful antioxidant, it can come in and mop up some of that damage that's occurring. But what's very important is you, you don't want to interfere with the healing part of that process. Yes. So you want to mop up the damaging free radicals, and these are the hydroxyl free radicals and the peroxynitrite free radicals, but you want to leave the healing signaling free radicals, so things like hydrogen peroxide and superoxide, you want to leave them alone because they're the things actually healing the body, they're fighting the infection, they're telling the body to adapt to the situation that's going on so that your body can become more resilient over time. Yes. So one of the studies they looked at was rheumatoid arthritis sufferers mm -hmm. and they have uh, a condition where the immune system is attacking their joints and it creates a lot of inflammation and pain and, and uh, lack of movement of the joints. Yes. So what they found was after these patients had been on molecular hydrogen therapy that there's a, a score sheet called a disease activity score yes. for rheumatoid arthritis patients and their disease activity score levels 
became lower. So they found that their movement improved or their pain levels improved um, and it actually reduced one of the levels of inflammation that we can measure in the blood, the C-reactive protein, uh, after they'd been on the molecular hydrogen therapy. So we're getting these good objective measures now to actually show that molecular hydrogen can act both as an anti-inflammatory agent and as a, a selective powerful antioxidant. Fantastic. So it knows specifically where it wants to, or what it needs to do, and it works just on the, the, the bad pathways. Yeah, well. you know, it, because it's such a reactive um, antioxidant, it looks for the most uh, active free radical, if you like, and they're the ones that are the most damaging. So that's how Fantastic. it selects itself. Wonderful. That's excellent news. So, Dr. Allen, you said that molecular hydrogen is a great anti-inflammatory, mm -hmm. selective uh, antioxidant, as you've said. Uh, now, you've also mentioned oxidative stress. Mm. Now, I know that gets a little bit confusing for a mm. lot of us. Can you just define and, and separate those two for us, please? Sure. Um, oxidative stress and inflammation are very closely linked. Mm -hmm. which is why it can get quite confusing biochemically because they do cause each other. Yes. All chronic diseases have origins in inflammation and uh, oxidative stress. So that, that is the damaging process that ends up causing the disease and the destruction to our cells. Okay. So what we find is that they both occur together. So when the cell is creating energy, it creates the free radicals. And by definition, a free radical is something that's missing an electron. So it goes and looks for something to donate that electron to it. And if you don't have enough antioxidants in your body, it will take that electron from your cells. It'll take it from your cell membranes, it'll take it from your DNA or from your proteins. And that's how it actually damages the tissues. Oh. So what happens is that oxidative stress response in fact triggers the cell to make things like nuclear factor, NF-kappa B is one of them, and that then creates inflammatory proteins called cytokines, and that then triggers the immune system to come along and create its inflammatory response. So it, it is a very vicious cycle. Um, inflammation by definition is triggered by the immune system, yes. and the, the oxidative stress is that uh, electron deficiency or that free radical state, if that makes sense. Ah, I see. Fantastic. Now, that's, I, I think it's good to try and just define those a little bit. I, that's really been helpful. Thank you very much. Thanks, Wade. Appreciate it.